Hello there, YouTube. Devin here again. Uh, today, we're going to be doing a review on this reproduction pattern 39 Canadian battle dress. Now, it's not listed as pattern 39. You can buy it today. It's actually a fairly high quality repro. There is a couple of gripes with it and some things that I really don't care about, but a lot of other people that are thinking uh, that want it to be like 100% accurate will we'll, we'll need to be okay with it about. There's actually a lot of things that I like on it a little bit better than the actual Pattern 39 Battle Dress. Um, but we're going to compare it to a set of Canadian Pattern 49 Battle Dress, where it's basically the exact same thing as a Canadian Pattern 39 Battle Dress uniform. The only thing that they really changed on it was the, the collar shape um, and some of the panel stitching, but it was really only one panel of stitching that they changed, and that's on the back, um, which we'll, we'll cover. So, um, But the goal of today is we're going to look at this. This is the Top Pots reproduction pattern. They call it Pattern 37 Battle Dress. Um, that is my first problem with this battle dress. Uh, Canada did not adopt battle dress until 1939, and theirs would be called Pattern 39 battle dress. So that is my first really, really big gripe with that, that they can't even name it right. Um, but it's not in, entirely bad. It's actually a, a, a fairly accurate color. A lot of people are always griping about colors of uniforms, especially wartime ones. Color variations were pretty normal. Um, so yes, it's not entirely perfect. It would have been pretty much the same color as this, but as you can see, it's actually quite close in the the green brown ratio it's not it's not bad um there would have been this would have been a probably fairly normal sight to see some color variation albeit this small in the uniform especially during the wartime produced ones during world war ii um and all that other good stuff basically the only difference though that really changed between pattern 39 and pattern 49 um was they basically just adopted the officer model uh, the officer model um, in a Pattern 39 battle dress would have an open collar, kind of like this. It would have a lapel style collar that you could button up to achieve this kind of pointed collar that you would see here on the Pattern 49 and Pattern 39 battle dress. The only difference is the enlisted version had a stand and fall collar and it would button all the way up and it would have two little hooks up here. Um, so they basically just changed the blouse to be the officer model for World War II to where it would have the nice lapel style, which is if you undo this top button and you roll it over, you get this this kind of nice if, if, this nice lapel style lay flat type of, of collar. So they would they would adopt that basically with the pattern 49 battle dress. This is what the World War II officer pattern 39 battle dress would look like. And then for the trousers they would take the bandage pocket off. That was about it. That was about the only changes Canada did uh, from pattern 39 to pattern 49, um, other than that one panel stitch from the back. Uh, the back would be done in two seams, uh, two panels, um, which was easier to produce wool for. You know, you could use a lot more wool. You weren't generating as much scraps. You were able to use a lot more of the wool roll, that it, like the fabric roll, than if you had one big panel in the back, but it did make the seam down the back uh, which made a lot of soldiers really uncomfortable. It would kind of rub and chafe uh, and create like a, a point uh, on your back. And so they would switch to the whole back of Pattern 49 Battle Dress being one panel. So there's no seam running down your spine like on the Pattern 39 Battle Dress. So, um, but we're going to take this off the uh, tripod now. We're going to compare the two blouses right next to each other once I get our, our friend here who has yet to be named. Um, the front runner is Kevin, so it'll be Devin and Kevin more than likely, um, but I'm not going to end that, I'm not going to uh, announce the winner of that video until Friday, which is my birthday, so that's how long I'm giving it, so if you want to go look at the announcement, the channel announcement video, um, and leave a comment for the name you think this guy should be, or vote for a name that you like, um, that, that's going to stay up until, until Friday, so... But we will now take the camera here off this tripod. I'm sorry for all the shadows and everything this video is going to have. UPS has been really crappy about delivering my ring light. It's been 
delayed for two days and then they didn't even knock on my door yesterday. They just said they attempted delivery and then didn't. So yeah, hopefully I can get that at some point here by the end of today, but normally they don't deliver it till the end of today. So, but we'll get it, get everything off of me, get everything off the tripod. It's heating up in here really, really fast. Um, so I'm going to try to get uh, a significant portion of this video done um, before it gets too warm. So, and then I'll need to kick on the AC again. But we'll take this off. We'll compare the blouse to the blouse, the pattern 49 blouse, the pattern 39 reproduction blouse. Um, and then we'll compare the trousers here. So, stay tuned. Alrighty. So here we are with the pattern 49 here on the left. And the reproduction from Top Pot's pattern 37, which actually should be called 39, Canadian Battle Dress on the right. First off, what you can see um, is that the pattern 49 is online. A lot of them would come online, some of them would come lined. Just depends on who made them and uh, when it was being made. I forget when this one was being made. This one was pretty 1953, so probably right at the end of the Korean War, um, which is when they were still really ramping up for the pattern 49 uh, for the most part. And so there's there's it's pretty common to find a lot of the early 50s ones unlined um, but you see on the pattern 39 over here they do have the nice line color now the lining material is actually pretty accurate you can see the lining material here that they would make the internal pockets and stuff out of on the pattern 49 now a lot of the canadian ones would be this kind of greener shade um, you can find tan though depends on the manufacturer but the material is actually very, very similar. It's actually really, really nice uh, to see that this kind of cotton liner material is very, very similar in constructions and, and weight and everything like that. Um, now the pockets are obviously, they didn't change them. They're the same kind of scalloped uh, pockets held in place by a single button. Um, they are bellowed on the Pattern 49. Uh, some of them are, this one's just stitched to look like it is. Um, on the pattern 39 over here, um, you can see it's pretty much the same thing. Stitched like it's supposed to be bellowed, um, but it's it's not actually bellowed. It just meant to look, look cool, but it's basically just a square chest pocket. Um, now, one of my first problems with, as you can see here on the Canadian uh, Top Pots reproduction, is this brass button. Granted, they're very nice, heavy-duty brass buttons, but they're not correct. Canada did not use buttons like this on any era of their battle dress, and they didn't use brass hardware on any of their battle dress. It would all be aluminum and steel. So all the buttons would be aluminum, and they would be of this variety, which is where the Canadians uh, get... This is the first, like, Canadian-style button. Um, so what it is, is it's a pressed aluminum kind of stud two pieces there's the kind of top flat part here and it's pressed over the kind of bottom shaped kind of stud area there and then there's a little tacked piece like in their bent spring so it, it kind of makes an s shape and it fits inside a channel inside this button so it can't come out the top or out the bottom but it's a bent piece of wire in like an s shape so it has one kind of bar that goes across uh, the inside of the button, and it would just be looped around that like a bunch of times, around that one bar, which would create the first Canadian style button, which is much less prone to being torn off a lot easier. It's a lot less prone to being kind of damaged. It's a lot less, it's a lot easier to stitch for one, so which is a good thing for soldiers to be able to repair their own uniforms. So, um, moving on to the kind of sleeves, the sleeve shape of both of them is pretty similar. Um, they're not as baggy as they would have been on the reproduction here. The reproduction, the bagginess of the sleeves is not as baggy as they normally would have been. We forget the battle dress was meant to have a lot of room in it. So the sleeves are a little bit, they're still loose, but they're not as loose as they should be. Um, and then we can get into the fabric. This isn't serge. It's wool. It's very high quality wool, but it's not serge fabric. It's woven, but it's brushed a lot, so you can't even see the weave in it. Whereas if you look here, you can see the individual lines of the weave. You can see it runs kind of like that here. 
uh, the pattern 49, the pattern 39 would have been identical. Um, now, this reproduction one, you can't even see the weave. It's there, uh, but it's it's been brushed so much here on top that you can't even see the weave. But it is woven. Um, now, on the front of the blouse, they have the same kind of button closure. Um, as you can see here again, five buttons going up the front. All right. Okay, there you go. One, two, three, four, five. And then you would have your little hooks on the pattern 39. Okay, and on the pattern 49, you see one, two, three, four, five of the correct buttons. This battle dress should have these buttons, um, which I'll probably end up cutting most of these off and taking some of these buttons and putting it on there. Um, but you see there's no hook collar. It went to the lapel style collar. So they added a fifth button way over here to close the collar up all the way for when it's cold or wet or whatever, rather than having the, the two hooks. It was just a little bit easier and it looked a lot smarter, which is something that militaries are, are big on. So you can see down here on the belt closure, the waist closure, on the pattern 49, you go to this nice shiny piece of stainless steel. Um, it has kind of a, a thickened part up here, like roller. Uh, and it's that's just how they would be. They would be made out of steel, pretty much the whole life of the Canadian battle dress. On the reproduction down here, you can see it is brass once again. It has been aged. Um, it's missing its roller. It's just a bent piece of wire. Um, but it's, it's brass, which is incorrect. So, um, next thing. Up here on the shoulder straps, you can see, for some reason, just a generic kind of epaulet strap or whatever you would use to hold on your equipment. Um, correct shape. They're both the correct shape and style. Everything like that. This one uses the correct button. For some reason, they didn't even put a metal button on the shoulder straps. Not only is it the incorrect button, it's plastic. I don't know why they did that. They went to great lengths to make sure all the hidden buttons were this really, really high quality, heavy duty brass buttons. And then they put plastic buttons on the shoulder straps, which are the ones you can see. The ones that like really matter. The only buttons like on the battle dress that you can see on this reproduction that actually matter what they look like. And you, they use plastic. Not only is it the wrong button, it's plastic. I don't know why they decided that was a good idea. Now, the cuff closures, as you can see, hidden on the pattern 49, standard button closure, single button, Canadian style button closure. Um, on the reproduction pattern 39, same thing, except they would use those brass buttons again. And you could see this sleeve is, is lined very, very nicely, just like how it would be on the actual ones with the same kind of fabric, the little hidden buttons. Um, now flipping it over to the back, this is a big thing where the Canadian battle dress, uh, the 39 pattern differs from the 49 pattern. And it was due to, to soldier complaints. So as you can see, um, on the Canadian pattern 39, now it's not all of them, because some of them were just tailored, um, you would see this big, huge seam running right down your spine. That was... a condition to basically use more wool during wartime, uh, which is, is good. I'm all for saving wool, but soldiers complained about this. The seam would always rub and push into your back, and it's a big seam. So on the pattern 49, they would get rid of that, and they would have these two kind of bi-swing pleats added um, for, for a little bit of gathering. You get a little bit of extra range of movement out of these kind of pleats that they would put in the back, and they removed that seam. So there's no seam here on the back of the pattern 49 battle dress. And there is one on the pattern 39 battle dress, but not always, depending on if they had it tailored. So then they would have all these little pleats to kind of smarten up the shape, which just took more time. So rather than doing that, they would, they would have two big pleats on the pattern 49 and they would um, create a little bit of a bias swing with it to give you that same range of motion. But it looked a lot smarter and it got rid of that giant rear seam. So. Um, but that is basically it for comparing the blouse to the blouse. As you can see, there is some gripes with the Pattern 39. They are all fixable. The buttons are all replaceable. Other than that, it's pretty good. 
um, to say the least. It is actually pretty good. The wool is pretty good. The color is f fine. Um, but yeah, the buttons would need to be replaced and the little buckle would need to be replaced. So, but now we'll go look at the trousers here, but I think I'm going to go run the AC for a little bit because it is very hot in here with these lights on. Alrighty, so now we are here back with the trousers. As you can see, they look pretty similar. The pattern 49s are on the bottom and the reproduction pattern 39s are on the top. Um, so we are looking at the left side of the pants, the left leg of the pants, they are folded in half here. Um, as you can see, map pocket, uh, document pocket, whatever you want it to be. Single button closure on the pattern 49, just big square pocket, kind of up by your thigh. Uh, the pattern 39, same thing, pocket line, just like how it should. As you can see, this one's kind of yellower, and it's not as nice of a fabric, actually, on these ones. This pair of pants is kind of a, a, an earlier one. So the fabric is kind of chintzier, the liner fabric is, at least behind this one pocket. Whereas it is the same kind of nice, very accurate kind of material you would find on most of the pattern 39 and pattern 49. Once again, brass buttons, incorrect. Um, so moving up to the uh, top here, you can see slash pockets, big, pretty deep slash pockets. They're lined out of that very nice kind of twill material. Um, same thing here, same kind of very nice twill material, albeit a little bit more tan than this pair. So up to the waist, if we fold it in, you can see it has your attachment points on the back for your three attachment points to connect your blouse to your trousers. It has your gigantic belt loops if you choose to wear a belt. Uh, on the inside, it has the correct aluminum buttons to obviously attach your braces to for suspending your pants. These would still be issued with braces for quite a long time, um, but you would start seeing kind of in the 50s the Canadians getting away from braces and going to belts. So this one is obviously you can see Battle Dress Surge. The stamp in this one's in very, very, very good shape. This one's were made in January of 1952 so kind of an earlier one waist 34 to 35 height um 40 to 41 and 57 to 58 so these pants are albeit way long i think these ones were improperly marked because they are way longer than for somebody that is only five foot seven i am five ten and these ones are kind of long on me so uh, and i have pretty long legs actually, and you can see that they are actually a lot longer than the Pattern 39 reproduction ones that are actually about my perfect size. So, um, so onto the Pattern 39 ones comparison, you can see they have the same brass buttons, again, the incorrect buttons, but beautifully lined, so you don't itch or chafe or anything like that, um, but the same incorrect brass buttons. On the back side, you have the same three buttons for attaching your blouse, to your trousers and then you have the same kind of belt loop arrangement that you normally would. Going up the fly you have your same five button closure on both of these um, although the pattern 49 has the correct buttons. Once again the same kind of incorrect brass buttons on the pattern 39. Um, moving on to the leg closures. This is a problem I have with this reproduction you can see it has this thin, long loop and only two adjustment points. You have open or you can close it by like two inches. Um, really incorrect. The Canadians would close theirs differently. Their pattern 39 and their pattern 49 would close the same way. And so if I fold that up here, the pattern 49, you can see there is two sets of buttons on it. Okay around the cuff and then on the back side of it there is two flaps they're shorter flaps they're kind of this weird diamond shape okay so you have an open position and then you have a closed position and the closed position takes up about four inches on either either side so you get eight times the closure customizability on this than the actual pair than you do on the reproduction um, so now obviously you can just add buttons and stuff to these and I'll probably remove some of these straps and put them on this pair of pants to make them more accurate. 
Um, but like, that's how they would adjust. You would have two sets of flaps rather than just one, because this has almost no adjustable closability at all. And so your pants will slide up right out of your gaiters and everything. It's a huge problem. And not only that, it's incorrect. So you would have, they would have a dual set of closures around the ankle cuffs on the actual Canadian Pattern 39. Easy fix though, if you know how to sew. Because like I said, overall, this because this is like one of one reproductions on the market that's actually worth a damn for Canadian battle dress reproduction. Um, we're doing, doing pretty well, I think, actually. So here we're looking at the right trouser leg now. So the right trouser leg, as you could see here, uh, on the pattern 49, it's just nothing. It's just a bare leg. And on the pattern 39, you have this wound pocket, this dressing pocket. Now there's a problem with the inaccuracies here. There would be a button closure on the Canadian pattern 39 battle dress pocket. You would have a button right up here at the top to make sure the pocket stays closed. This one does not have it. It's just an open pocket. It is bellowed, um, but it just is an open pocket, which is incorrect. So now if we rotate the trousers to be looking at kind of the back side here now, um, you could see these are pretty much the same. Um, they have the same pocket closure method, just a triangular pocket flap in the back pocket. So, and then there is no pocket on the left butt cheek. It is only on your right butt cheek as most men were right-handed at this time. As we all know, historically in the military, if you were left-handed, you had a crippling illness. Uh, unfortunately, that was borderline incurable. Um, they did not favor left-handed left people at all. They didn't make any accommodations for left-handed people, and this is no exception. Most people in the world are right-handed, but, you know, the left side of your brain controls the, the right side of your body, so left-handed people are actually in their right mind. Um, but unfortunately, the most of the militaries throughout most of the time periods in the world think that that was a crippling illness that was uncurable and you were um, not as good as everyone else. So, but unfortunately, that's just how it is. So, but that's kind of the overview now of this Top Pot's reproduction of Canadian Battle Dress. Overall, I'm actually fairly happy with it. It's hard to get everything perfect, okay? The wool's actually really, really nice. The cut's really, really nice. The color's okay enough. A lot of the buttons you're never going to see, so I really don't care, but I am going to replace them to make it more accurate. But it's lined correct, it's constructed correct for the most part, just a couple little features, and then obviously they named it wrong because um, they based it off of a British one. They just dyed green because a cursory Google search could have fixed all of these problems. They could have they could have done a cursory Google search and fixed all these. So I'm not really giving them any slack on this, and I said I was going to do to the owner of Top Pots, who I've been talking to for months on this, um, I said I was going to do a full review, and I said don't expect any sympathy from me because I see a lot of stuff that is wrong with it. And he's like, well, I look forward to watching it. So, um, but here we go. Uh, that's what's wrong with this. There's there's a good amount wrong with it, but it's little things um, that are pretty easily fixable. I hope that in the future, if they do more runs, that they make it better and more correct because it's wrong in a lot of ways, but it's very easy stuff to fix. So now we'll, we'll, we'll go wrap up and do a conclusion here of the video. All right, well, in conclusion of this here pattern of battle dress, I'm wearing it right now. And like I was telling you, the wool quality on this is very, very good. If you've ever had to break in a new pair, piece, piece of serge wool, um, or like a new old stock piece of serge wool, you know that stuff's like wearing fiberglass. This doesn't feel like that. Um, because this is actually a higher quality wool than what they use to make serge. So this is actually a very comfortable, nice, awesome piece of gear to wear. I love the wool that they chose to use for this uniform. Once again, like I said, I do have a problem with how they finished it. It is too brushed, so it doesn't have that nice woven look. Um, but overall, it is a very nice heavy gauge of wool. It's very comfortable. It gives you the nice range of movement you need. As you can see, it fits quite well. 
it works, okay? This uniform is one of basically one that's currently on the market. Now, there is stuff you can do to convert pattern 49 back to 39. There is companies that can do that. Um, but the pattern 49s that I have are all from the 50s, the Korean War, which are collectible, at least to me. Um, to a lot of people, they aren't. I really don't have any problems with people converting theirs back. But I wanted a nice reproduction to be out there because I'd rather destroy a reproduction reenacting than an original, even if I did have to convert that original back. And honestly, I think I'd be wear I'd rather be wearing this anyways just because the wool is much nicer, to be honest. It is a much more comfortable wool, much more better quality wool than what Serge would be. Like I said, the color's really accurate. The buttons are kind of a problem, but you don't see most of the buttons, so you don't need to replace most of them if you don't want to. You really only need to replace the two on the shoulders, okay? Which is a pretty easy fix. I mean, people, if you want to be nitpicky, a lot of historians are really nitpicky on stuff like this. It's overall a pretty accurate representation of battle dress for what people are going to see. Yes, the ankle gathering is wrong on the trousers, okay? Big deal. It's going to be in the gaiters. Yes, the buttons are wrong, but they're all covered buttons. So it doesn't really matter. And they're nice buttons. Those brass buttons are really heavy and really nice, actually. Um, but they're not the correct buttons they should be. Um, you can easily sew a button, because it was an exposed button, on the wound flap. You can easily stitch a Canadian um, button right to the front of that pocket and call it good. The bandages that would fit in there would be small anyways. And a lot of guys didn't even carry their bandages in there because it's just, it got in the way. So they would oftentimes keep them in their 37 pouches of their web equipment. So it's a lot easier to s sleep without a bunch of stuff in your pockets. So, and they wouldn't really use it, but you could easily stitch a button right to the front of that pocket and it would be and replace the, the collar, uh, sorry, the uh, epaulet buttons. And it would be a pretty ready to go awesome set of Canadian battle dress. And I'm actually pretty impressed overall with the quality of the uniform. They got all the big stuff right. They got a lot of the little stuff wrong. But a lot of that little stuff doesn't matter in the end because nobody's going to see it other than you unless you go out of your way to show them. Um, there is supposedly other reproduction battle dresses in the works. Right now, this is really the only one on the market. It is kind of pricey, but it is really, really nice. I do think it's worth the price. If you do have a problem, you can convert it. I'm going to slowly kind of convert it, replace all the buttons. Stitching buttons isn't hard. It's just time consuming. Um, shouldn't, shouldn't be too difficult to do if you have a problem with it being not 100% perfectly accurate. I think this is more than adequate enough for a, a reproduction, especially since nobody's really portraying Canada hardly ever anyways. Um, but it's actually a really, really nice battle dress. I'd highly recommend for those of you looking for one to go buy a set. It is actually a very awesome uniform. I'm very impressed with it. I'm impressed with the comfort. I'm impressed with the cut and the shape. Um, they're willing to help you size it, um, which is very, very good. Before you order it, you should send them an email, send Top Pots an email asking what size you should order. They have a whole sheet for you to fill out. I'm actually very impressed with how they size it. I got a medium blouse and a a large pair of trousers because for those of you who don't know I have the ass of a cheerleader um, so I needed to go for the large trousers and I'm actually very very impressed with how the trousers fit to the blouse um, none of the buttons in the back even on the real battle dress line up that's always been a gripe with battle dress for me is that the blouse little button slots in the back uh, don't line up with the buttons on the trousers that are designed to do that I've never seen a set of battle dress that does that really well actually um they're always slightly off but you can always like i said cut them off and stitch them in the correct spot easy enough to do everyone should know how to sew a button so but overall like i said very very impressed with this uniform i would highly recommend that you guys go buy it if you're looking for one or if you're just looking to try to experience what a cool set of battle dress is um, this is a uniform that actually surprisingly well blends in with a lot of environments, especially here in North America, which is why they made it the color they did. 
It works surprisingly well. It has lots of pocket space. It gives you good range of motion. It's made out of wool, so it's naturally fire retardant, water resistant, wind resistant, hypoallergenic, antimicrobial. You know, it's a good uniform to wear, especially the pants. If you're out just doing whatever, or especially like in the fall when it starts to get cold or the early winter, it'd be an awesome uniform if you're just out cutting wood or something like that even. It's fantastic. I love it. The battle dress uniform was designed to be very functional, functional over fashion, um, which is why it served for so long. So thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. We're on the new tripod. Like I said, I'm sorry about the shadows. UPS is really effing me on the ring light uh, and everything like that. Hopefully I'll be able to pick that up by this evening. Um, but hopefully this video will be out sometime today, uh, which will be Wednesday, uh, June something or other. But my birthday's on Friday, all the other good stuff. So if you want to wish me a happy birthday in the comments, I don't know if I'll be doing something on Friday or Saturday or whatever for my birthday um, or anything like that special for the stream. But if you wanted to, by all means, it's there to do. Um, and if you do plan on buying one of these battle dresses or you do have this pair of battle dress, I'd like to know what you think about it. Um, or when you do buy it, I'd love to hear what you think about it because I'm actually still fairly impressed um, with this thing. Um, it's not 100% perfect, but it's still really good. So thank you all for watching, and hopefully I can see all of you here in the next video. Bye-bye now.